The next 10 years are going to be fantastic for Queensland in terms of the development. When we think of large programmes of work, we're thinking about the health um, delivery programme, the uh, capital expansion programme in Queensland. Uh, we're looking at an Olympics uh, pipeline, but we're also looking at energy transition and clean energy. We're also looking at other social infrastructure, that plus educational facilities. There's large programmes of work happening throughout Australia around um, schools building. Um, all of those types of large scale, long-term programmes. Some of these are all quite, quite different. So transport and linear infrastructure is one thing, but buildings and, and if you like, in, into the regions as well is another. So there are different kind of competing uh, factors amongst the different programmes. I think when it comes to buildings, there's an opportunity to look at kind of modern methods of construction, but fundamentally some of the crux about how do you deliver large scale infrastructure when you're competing for, for resource, the same factors really apply. Modern message construction, in my eyes, is a, is a catch-all term, a bit of an umbrella term. It's kind of interchangeable with industrialised construction. Some people are starting to use that term. The crux of that is it's shifting the dial away from stick build or on-site in situ and looking at standardised types of designs um, that can be built, developed uh, in, a, in a factory off-site. Because you're actually building within a factory, it takes out any of the inclement weather issues. You also can increase quality. Um, because you are actually constructing and adding value in a controlled environment. The other thing is where your skilled workforce is required. Um, so from a health and safety perspective, maybe if you're using hot works or wet works, you're actually applying those types of high skilled and, and potentially more dangerous uh, operations and activities in a controlled environment. That means that when you get to site, and if we think in Australia, some of the regional sites, for example, you don't necessarily have to have a skilled workforce locally at hand in order to achieve the outcome that you're looking for. Um, so it lowers the barrier to entry. Um, upsides of that means that you potentially can, can look into and tap into uh, local uh, enterprises, local businesses, um, and really allow them to get access to these large programmes of work which generally have been prohibitive to uh, regional and smaller organisations. Increasingly, we're starting to see uh, a need for us in the infrastructure delivery space uh, to look at carbon, um, to look at what the embodied carbon is and, and not just the, the delivery carbon, uh, the full life cycle of these components. And modern method construction allows you to actually understand exactly the genesis of, of the component tree, where it's come from, um, how sustainable it is. And you can design in a way where actually you're looking at the full life cycle of that component. Um, so design for deconstruction is becoming increasingly important. Um, but in order to unlock that as well, we need a, a consistent and standardised way by which we're going to measure that across the industry. Oricon worked very successfully in Victoria with VHBA in terms of the COVID response. We actually turned around um, turnkey with working in partnership with architectural firms and, um, and some manufacturers. Uh, six weeks uh, we were able to deliver facilities um, which compared to what a stick build would have taken is, is a fraction of the time. Funding and insurance is interesting um, because actually that's what really makes it tick. Um, quite often clients will look to the market and look to private sector uh, to, to, to drive a step change. And there are a number of players in the market which are doing that. But it really, for the wholesale step change, it really needs to be driven by a government organisation. Um, and I think one of the, the slight frustrations is because some of the government organisations are so busy in a delivery space they're not really having an opportunity to take their head, head up, take a step back and actually engage with one another. Some of the other things is perception. So when you're thinking of buildings and standardised design, standardised design's been around for, for many years. Sometimes it gives a perception that everything is going to look the same. Um, but modern um, kit apart type designs uh, allow for nuanced differences, climatic differences, regional variations. And you can actually, in a quite an efficient way, get some uh, architectural and, and visual and aesthetically pleasing uh, variations. The collaboration aspect is crucial to, to unlocking this value. What are the brains that we need in the room to stitch those things together, I think would be, <laughs> um, be marvellous.